guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are finally gonna do another dinosaur. It's been quite a while and I've been actually wanting to do a Quetzal for actually a really long time, so I'm finally just going to do it today. Anyways, let's get started. Okay guys, so the first thing that I'm going to work on is going to be the clay head for our Quetzal. Now I think the head is going to be the only clay piece that I'm making for this creature. I think the feet and the little fingers on the wings I'm going to be making out of Instamorph so that they're a little bit more sturdy. So the first thing that I'm going to do to make the head is I'm going to take a lump of tin foil. I've kind of roughly shaped it into a very long pointed piece and we're going to completely cover this in clay and smooth it out. Now one problem that I am going to have with this head is I have to make it sturdy and lightweight at the same time. I have to make it sturdy because of how thin the beak is, but I also have to make it lightweight because it's going to be the only clay piece and it's going to be quite large compared to the rest of the body of the Quetzal. So it's going to be a top heavy piece if I'm not too careful. Actually, even if I'm careful, it's still going to be top heavy. I would just have to make the wireframe set up in a certain way where it could actually handle it. Anyways, once I got everything completely covered in clay, smoothed out, and I have it roughly shaped into what I want it, I'm going to start adding the details to it. So I'm going to start by breaking up the details of the beak. So I need to figure out where the top and bottom of the beak are, that way I can make it an opening. So for this, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to roughly sketch out where the mouth is going to end up opening. The mouth itself won't open, but it needs to have a point where it looks like it will. So I'm just going to roughly sketch that out, and then once I like how that looks, I'm going to refine the line. So it's going to look a little bit messy first, but then I'll smooth it out and define it with my tools. Once that's done, we kind of have an idea of where the top of the head is and the bottom and stuff, so now I'm going to take a piece of clay and I'm going to make a crest for our Quetzal. So I'm just going to take a lump of clay, I'm going to put it at the very top of the head, I'm going to kind of pinch it a little bit to make it stand up a bit more, and then I'm going to blend it into the rest of the face. I'm going to roughly shape it until I like how it looks, and then we can move on to more details. So we need to figure out where the beak ends and the feathers begin. So we're going to outline that and kind of make a nice indent. The reason I'm going to be making an indent is because I am going to slightly fur the face to make it kind of fluffy and feathery. And this just helps define where the beak is so when I'm adding the fur to the face I have a nice even straight line to follow. Next, I need to figure out where the eyes are going to go. Now, these are going to be further back than I thought they would be, so they're basically almost at the very back of the head. So I'm just going to take some balls of clay. I'm going to lay those out where I want them. I'm going to make sure that both of them are nice and even, and then I'm going to take strips of clay to make the eyelids and frame the eyes. Once I have those strips of clay laid out, I'm going to blend those into the rest of the face and just kind of adjust the shape of the eyes. Okay, so our main details are all sculpted, now we just need to add a bit of texture. So I'm going to rough up the texture of the beak and the very top of the head where the crest is. The reason I'm doing this to the crest is because that part is probably not going to get furred. I'm going to leave it blank, that way I can paint some more distinct markings on it. And then once I'm happy with how the head looks, I'm going to put this in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about 55 minutes. Now for painting the head, I'm going to be doing this a little bit differently because of how long the piece is. It's going to be easier if I paint parts of it separate. So I'm going to start with the face itself first and then we're going to completely finish up the details on that before we move on to the beak. So the main fabric that I'm going to use for the body of the Quetzal is going to be kind of a brown. So I'm going to primer the face with a brown similar to what my fabric is going to look like. So I'm going to get that completely primered with brown, I'm going to let it dry, and then we can start adding more details to it. So the main thing that I want to do right now is I want to lighten the top of the head. I don't want it to be as dark as the rest of the body, I want it to kind of stand out. So I'm going to start using some lighter browns and try and blend that into the brown that we currently have. That way it fades from the very top of the head being light to the bottom of the head being dark. So my first idea with the markings on the crest is I wanted to do polka dots. I'm not sure why and they didn't really look that great. It kind of looks like the markings on a Pokemon egg and I just didn't like it. So I ended up completely painting over that and then doing new markings. 
So for the new markings, I decided to get completely re-inspired, looked up more references, and figured out that I wanted to go with more of a line pattern than I wanted to go with spots. They just would look a lot more angular and bird-like. I also decided that I wanted to add a bit more of an olive green to the top to add a different color to the face, and then the markings themselves are going to be blue. The reason I went with a blue is the body is going to be brown and the wings are actually going to be more of an orange color I decided, so I thought blue would be a good color to go with the orange. So I redid that, I used kind of a more metallic blue for the main body of the markings and then I used a bit of a lighter blue to kind of frame them a bit to make them stand out. Because they were kind of blending in a little bit too much with the green. Now sometime while I was in the middle of making the markings on the top of the crest, I did paint the eyes, but all I basically did was paint them black. Anyways, after that I just added a few highlights here and there and I let that dry. So for the beak, the first thing that I ended up doing was I painted the crack that divides the two halves of the beak. So I filled that with black and I cleaned up the edges, and then once that was dry I painted the body of the beak. I kind of wanted to go with a bit of a creamy khaki color, but closer to a gray. And then I also wanted the top part to be a little bit different than the bottom, so I made the top part a little bit brighter and then I used a bit of a darker gray on the bottom. It's not much of a difference, but it helps divide the beak a little bit more. So I went over that completely, I didn't really do anything else to it, I let it dry, and then the next thing I did was I mixed up some resin and then I just painted over the details that are not going to get furred. So I resined over the beak, the eyes, and the crest, and I set that aside somewhere to dry. Obviously that's going to take a while to cure, so we're going to start on working on other things like the sewing now. So for the sewing, the first thing that I need is my pattern. So I just kind of quickly sketch something out. Um, the body is going to be obviously very long, so I have a main body piece where majority of it is actually just neck, the wing, and then a piece that's going to connect the back of the legs, kind of the tail portion. So I'm going to work on the wings first. They are going to have a top and bottom, and I also want to kind of dye them a little bit. So I'm starting off with a orange fabric, and I want to kind of dingy up the edges. That way it can fade from brown to orange, because the main body of our Quetzal is going to be brown, and I don't want to have just an immediate uh, orange wing. I want it to kind of fade into the other color. So I got the fabric cut out for the wings and the tail, I laid them out, got them kind of damp, and I'm just going to take some acrylic that's watered down and start adding it where I want it. So I'm going to start with kind of a lighter brown and then I'm going to add details over that with more of a darker brown. That way we can kind of get a fade, because once I leave this to dry it is going to kind of bleed into itself. Now sadly this is one of those things that kind of has to dry overnight too, so the next morning once all my fabric was dry again, I could start sewing them. So for our sewing, all the pieces that we have right now have a top and bottom, so I'm going to pin these together and we're going to sew around them. So for like the tail, we're going to sew two of those sides, those are the outer sides, and then once that's done we're going to flip it and then sew the other side to make it closed. This isn't going to get stuffed or anything, so that's why I'm just sewing it closed. And then for the wings, we're going to basically do the same thing. We're sewing around the outside portion of the wing, leaving the base open so we can flip it right side out. Once we have our wings flipped right side out, I'm going to pin them together, that way they're nice and flat. And I'm going to take that pattern that we made earlier and cut out the different portions of it so we can sketch them onto this. So I basically have the shape of the arm inside of the wing that we need to trace around, so I have that, I'm going to cut that out, and then I also have the leg because the wings are connected to the leg. So I'm just going to sketch those out, and then we're going to take our sewing machine again, and we're going to follow these lines. Moving on to the body of the Quetzal. Like I said, this is going to be brown and I'm going to be using a fur fabric. So I have a left and a right and we're going to pin these together and we're going to sew down the back of the Quetzal. Okay, so we have our clay piece done and we also have our fabric pieces done. Now I need to work on the wire frame and the Instamorph pieces. So we're going to be making the finger pieces for the wings along with the pieces for the feet. So I already put the wireframe together, it's very simple, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to add the Instamorph legs to the wires for the legs. 
So I'm melting my Instamorph in my hot water. I'm going to take a lump of it and we're going to put it at the end of the wire. So the wire for the leg is looped, that way the Instamorph has something to hold on to, and I'm just going to kind of mush it into place, and then I'm actually going to use my scissors and cut the individual toes apart and then kind of roughly shape them. So I'm going to do this to both of the feet, and then I'm going to be doing kind of the same thing for the finger pieces. I'm going to leave them a solid piece and then cut the fingers apart. All of the Instamorph pieces have to cool until they're completely white again, and then we can start painting them. So for the painting, I'm going to paint them all orange first, and then we can kind of add a bit of a brown to them. Because I want them to match the portions of the wing, because the wing is where they're going to kind of connect off of. So I'm going to let all my paint dry, and then I'm going to resin over these like we did with the clay piece. Now those are going to have to cure overnight like our clay piece did. So we're going to have to let that sit, and then once everything is completely cured, we can start putting our quetzal together. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our wire frame and we're also going to take the piece of fabric for the body, so the fur fabric that we were sewing. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna lay it on top and figure out where the wires for the wings and the legs are gonna stick out and I'm gonna cut some holes for them. Now because the Instamorph pieces are already on our wire frame, we'll have to cut the holes for the legs wide enough for those to fit through. But what I ended up doing once I had the wire frame in place was I sewed those holes kind of closed a little bit. After that's in place, I'm going to take our clay head and we're going to glue it to the wire for the neck. We're going to let that dry and then we're going to take the fabric for the neck and glue it all the way around the base of the head. Now I actually had an idea for the throat of the Quetzal because I knew the fabric wasn't going to reach all the way around. We're going to have the throat of the Quetzal a nice red color. That way that can stand out as well. So I ended up cutting a piece to fit. I'm going to glue it into place just like we did with the fabric around the base of the head. We're then going to let all of our fabric dry, and then once it's dried, we can take our needle and thread, and we can close up and stuff the rest of the body. Once I have the body stuffed and closed up, I'm going to take my hair trimmer, and I'm going to move the wires for the legs and wings kind of out of the way, and I'm going to adjust the length of the fur. So I'm going to kind of shorten the sides of the body, and a little bit the bottom of the neck. So I'm going to get that shaved, and then we can add the fabric for the wings. For this, we're going to take the wires for the wings, and we're going to run our wings over those wires. Once our wings are on the wire frame, we can then start sewing the wings in place on the body. So we're going to have to sew kind of around the arm portion. We're going to sew that closed all the way around the wire frame. So where the wire goes into the wing, we're going to sew around that, and then we're going to take the webbing of the wing and sew it along the side of the body until we get to where the legs are. Once we have the wings sewn into place on the body, we then need to add the legs to them. So we're going to take the fabric portion where the legs are going to go, and we're going to take the very edge of it, and we're going to glue that around the ankles of our Instamorph legs. These are going to have to dry a little bit as well, and then we can stuff and close up those legs. And while we're sewing the back of the legs closed, we're also going to be taking that piece of fabric for the tail, and we're going to be sewing it in between the legs. Now I need to go back to the wings and I need to add the fingers to them. So when we sewed around the base of the wings, we left a hole and I'm basically going to slide our Instamore fingers right into that hole and glue it into place. Once I had everything put together, I realized that the wire frame for the neck was a little bit too weak. I didn't use a thick enough gauge and it was just not holding itself up very well, so I decided to go back in and add a few wires. So I'm going to be doing a very simple fix for this. So basically, I'm going to measure out where I need the wire, and I'm going to make another piece of wire to go in the body. This doesn't need to be added to the wire frame, it's just an extra support piece, so we're just going to slide it in place. So I'm cutting a little tiny hole at the very back of the Quetzal, I'm going to slide the wire in place, and then I'm going to close that up. And now our Quetzal can actually hold his head up. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do for our Quetzal is we need to fur the face. And so I made some fur trimmings, and we're going to use our fabric glue to glue this onto the face. So I'm just going to completely cover the face where I want the fur to stick with the glue. I'm going to make sure that it's nice and laid out. And we're going to kind of sprinkle our fur trimmings and kind of push them into place where we want the fur. And then I'm also going to take my tools and just kind of adjust where the fur is before the glue dries. So I'm going to get everything laid out, make sure that I like how it looks, and then we just have to let this dry.
and that's how I made a Quetzal. I had so much fun with this project. I can't wait to try and do another dinosaur. I've been actually wanting to do an Ankleo for a while, so I'm trying to figure out how to do that because part of me wants to make it like fantasy themed, but the other one is like, ah, oh, just do it normal. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to have him along with a bunch of other creatures in my Etsy shop, so if you guys want to buy anything, check the links down below for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!